following program is brought to you by Lou Rita's and American Table, Blackwater Barrels, the Rocky Mount Mills Project, and Double Barley Brewing Company. the brew mini series um, we're here on location this week um, at the Rocky Mount Mill property and the historic uh, effort to revamp this place That's right. um, and turn it in a portion of it to into the brew mill and it's where Sweet Tata's restaurant and Koi Pond are located and I am here with uh, Sebastian Wolfram uh, who is the head brewmaster for the entire project that's right Tell us a little bit about what's going on out here. Sure. So uh, we, as you just mentioned, we already have two breweries up and running. Um, the brew mill overall is a, is, a, is a piece of the overall site, as you explained, the Rocky Mountain Mills. In general, um, there's some houses, there will be some offices, some apartments, um, some restaurants, and then the brew mill piece, which is, is sort of the starting point of all this, to kind of bring some life here, bring some excitement and bring a really active community. The brewers are um, very engaged, not only in what they do, but also in their, in their customers. Yes. And, uh, and so it's, it's a very exciting So It'll be like a little village. That's right, that's right. It's a little village here. Um. And, and that's where we start. And so we have those two up and running, um, which you'll see a little bit later. And then uh, and by the end of the year, the plan is to have the Brumel incubator up and running. By the end of this year? End of this year. Oh, yes. goodness. So that's sort of the next step. And, uh, and as part of this, we'll have five breweries that are starting up under one roof, and they have uh, each their own brew house and their own brewing equipment, and they share the packaging hall. So, Very nice. Um, you know, if they want cans or kegs, they, they essentially share that equipment. So a hub, A if hub, you will. exactly. Uh -huh. And it allows, it allows them to start up and kind of have a proof of concept, and then uh, it's, it's all these terms. So in about two years, um, hopefully they get up and running and are successful and they can either decide to stay or move forward and, and start their actual own larger brewery. Will there be large town. production for distribution on shelves or, or is this just a, a startup effort? Well, it is a startup effort, but it is geared towards being able to have both on draft in bars and restaurants around uh -huh. town and into uh -huh. Raleigh and other markets. And then also uh, do cans and be on the grocery store shelves. Absolutely. So it's designed from startup to growth mode. That's right. Oh, that's, that's great. Right. That's great. And then when people normally run out of their initial capacity, is that that's when we think people are ready to move on and and have a track track record uh, outside of this incubator to kind of you know raise capital. And, well, that is and wonderful. Really get going. And I know y'all have already started holding events and whatnot out That's here. That's right. So yeah, so we're already getting the excitement going, which is really important. You know, there's, there's, uh, you can make beer, but you also need to sell it, and that's there you a, go. It's a very important piece. And then, in order to sort of underline this sort of learning and startup experience, um, Nash Community College, their program will be uh, having a classroom here mm -hmm. as part of the setup. Great partnership yeah. and, for uh, for a wonderful trend that's that's growing rapidly. And, and a lot of knowledge is needed, and, and so people can come here, and they can not only learn about brewing with Nash, but they can you know, learn about restaurants, accounting, you know, if they want to do a brew pub at some point. Oh, that's or, great. Or you know, go more into the hospitality sector, so there's a whole, All aspects a whole big it. spread that is available that you normally wouldn't have. Normally, you start up your brewery, you don't have a neighbor who's brewing, so there's an interaction that you will have that you normally won't have, and there's a lot of learning. Brewers are very collaborative. There's, there's very few secrets in the industry, which makes it so fun to work in. Well, there you go. Well, let's go take a walk down to um, Sweet Tater's Restaurant on the property here of the Rocky Mount Mills. All right, let's do that. And we're here at Sweet Tater's Restaurant, um, the new property here at the Rocky Mount Mills uh, Brew Mill property. Mm -hmm. And we're here with Chris Floor, uh, he and his wife, Erin, are owners of Sweet Tater's Restaurant. And um, thanks for having us out. Um, you've got a nice looking operation here and a restaurant. And um, tell us a little bit about uh, brand new. Um, how Absolutely. long have you been open? We've been open for a little over a month now. Wow. And uh, I know the crowds have been coming in. They absolutely have. Rocky Mountain, uh, we've had a huge turnout around here. Uh, the 
uh, entire community seems really excited about it. Um, it's not, you know, it's one thing to open up a restaurant, it's something completely different to open up a brewery as well. So uh, there, there's a lot of interest and a lot of people coming out and it's just been a really good positive feedback so far. So what was it like, I know y'all um, for a long time brewed at your home in the kitchen. Absolutely. So what was it like going from brewing in the kitchen to a big operation? It, it's been a, a, a little bit of a learning process. My wife is the brewer, so uh, she's the one that could maybe answer some of these questions a little better. I, I, I help her out. I lift all the heavy stuff she tells me to. I hear you. <laughs> but for the most part, I mean, the, the overall process is exactly the same. You know, you, you, you mash in with your grain, you all boil the product, and then you ferment it for a while. It's just a question of scaling everything up um, and uh, just tweaking out uh, all the little different pieces. One of the nice things about professional brewery equipment is that it's a lot easier to use and a lot easier to clean. So you know, a lot of our, uh, a lot of the stuff that we did uh, is, has been made a lot easier, just on a much, much larger scale. You know, yeah, the sanitation is definitely a, a big piece of learning exactly. um, behind this, this business. Absolutely, and, and that's something that I've heard many times, brewing is 90% cleaning, uh, and that certainly seems to be the case. I would maybe even say 110% cleaning at this point, a lot less brewing. But um, it's uh, you got to keep it clean, otherwise you know it's not going to come out right, so absolutely. It, that, it helps with your consistency of the product too. Absolutely. It tastes the same each and every time. And that's also, that, that brings up a great point about one of the biggest difference between your home brewers and your commercial brewers is the consistency. Uh, without that consistency, if you can't make that same product over and over again, then you know your, your customers aren't gonna keep coming back. Right. So you've gotta be able to do it consistently, make sure it's the exact same every time. And my wife's got a great background for that. She worked at the Department of Agriculture for okay. uh, several years. She worked in the uh, laboratories with some technicians doing a lot of uh, uh, scientific work on cereal grains, you know, like your barley and your wheat and things like that. Oh, so, what a great background. Absolutely. Definitely. So she's familiar with all the lab equipment that you would typically use, some of it much bigger than something that we could fit into our little brewery, but she's got the background and she knows exactly how to do the, the cell counts and the checking for damage on the grain and all, all kinds of different things that really truly help with that quality control and to get that consistency. Well, that is very, very nice. Um, um, what we have here um, is both a brewery and a restaurant and um, I know that you source your sweet potatoes locally here. Absolutely. One of our uh one of the things we wanted to do from the very beginning with our product, with our uh, entire place here, is to get everything as locally as possible. So both on the restaurant side and on the beer side. Uh, on the beer side, like you said, we're getting local sweet potatoes uh, from Hickory Meadows Organics uh, up in uh, Whitakers. We're getting uh, our barley, our malt from a place in Durham, Epiphany Malts, uh, and we've got a hop farm right down in Wilson. Cardinal Pine that we go to. I've heard of them. So we were getting all kinds of this stuff as locally as possible. And the same is true on the restaurant side. You know, we're just a, a block and a half from the farmer's market. And we go there every Saturday to pick up as much, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables as we can. Uh, they just started uh, opening on Wednesdays as well. So we're okay. uh, starting to uh, go there on Wednesdays and Saturdays. now. Excellent, as as we excellent. Well, we're gonna be right back with you. We're gonna head on over to the kitchen for the brewing. Sounds great. And Chris, if you will, tell us a little bit about um, your actual operations here. I'd be more than happy to, absolutely. So first of all, we've got this beautiful bar uh, created by some local craftsmen, uh, uh, this 100-year-old uh, piece of pine on top, and these 50-year-old oak planks with the hand-sawn marks hand -sawn, on Hand-sawn, I can see that in absolutely. there. Absolutely. Uh, this was made by uh, uh, some local people at Red Oak Woodshop. Uh, again, you know, it's part of our idea of trying to keep everything as local as possible, not just with That's the food, beautiful. but also with the local contractors as well. Um, the bar behind here, of course, we've got all the uh, brewery equipment and we've got uh, as a, a, a nice uh, bar system back here. Right now, we've got a lot of North Carolina breweries on tap and uh, we are in the process of making our own beer back here as well. So we'll be getting that uh, switched out uh, really quickly. Uh, my wife Erin is our brewer uh, and she has been working on a lot of different recipes. Uh, we've got a lot of different things coming in. Uh, one of them right now is a rye IPA. She's also got a sweet potato ale uh, that will be coming on again with those sweet potatoes from uh, Hickory Meadows Organics. I like anything sweet potato. There you go, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, we've also got a lemon beer coming up and a oh. amber. Uh, so we've got a, a bunch of good uh, varieties coming up uh, soon. Uh, you can see all the stainless back here. It's a great operation and you know, it's, we, we really like the way that it's really uh, public. So everybody can see what's going on. And again, getting back to cleanliness, you know, if everybody can see it, you've got to keep it a lot cleaner. There so you that go. really helps us out as well. 
So our tanks back here, you see, the ones up front are where the beer is actually created. Uh, we put our uh, barley and whatever grains that we use. Sometimes, depending on the different types of beer, you might have some wheat or some rye grains or all kinds of things. Some people are using uh, sorghum to make uh, gluten-free beers uh, nowadays. Oh, okay. So um, we've got the barley in there. Uh, we uh, let it steep basically for about an hour or so, and then we push it all over to our boil kettle and get it all boiled, and that's where the beer itself is made, and that's where we add the hops. Uh, once that's done, we pump it into one of the fermenters, which are the rounder fellows on the back, uh, and it'll stay there for, uh, depending on the type of beer, anywhere from one to six weeks. Wow. Um, the, the actual boiling and brewing process takes you know, four to eight hours, all told, and then the fermentation takes one to six weeks. Then we pop it over into one of these other little containers over here for the last step, which is just basically finishing and carbonation, and then it's ready to keg. As soon as it's kegged, we can pop it right on into our <laughs> kegerator here and start pouring. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so that's the best part. It looks so scientific. That, that's absolutely right. You know, there, there is definitely an art to making beer, you know, on the recipe side, but the rest of it is really just straight science. You, know, you have to do regular samples, uh, make sure the yeast is doing what it's supposed to do, uh, making sure the pH levels, uh, the uh, mineral levels, all that other kind of stuff are exactly where you want it to mm -hmm. be. And uh, again, that's where, you know, my, my wife, our head brewer, really shines on that is, is with her scientific background, so. Well, that's yeah. good. That's really good. It's very impressive. And I'm sure it's been a major undertaking moving from the kitchen to the restaurant here. It is, absolutely. Um, but you're um, here now. And so just a quick um, uh, bit about your future. Where do you see uh, sweet potatoes four or five years down the road here? Sweet taters, you know, what I'd love to see is, you know, opening up a few more of these sort of places. You know, I think this is something certainly Eastern uh, North Carolina lacks. Uh, if you look at Western North Carolina, you look at Charlotte or Raleigh or especially Asheville, and they've got a thriving brewery culture there. You go into yes, Asheville, you can walk around and, you know, within just a really quick tour of the city, just a walking distance, you can hit, you know, seven, eight, nine different right. breweries. And it's fantastic. You know, it's, it's not the, it's not a dive bar. You know, that's not the atmosphere right. that you have right. at a brewery. It's always very nice, congenial. You know, people like to sit and talk to each other. A and, culture. Exactly. Definitely. And, and that, that's what we like to do here. We've got this great front porch with the rocking chairs where you can sit down and enjoy some time with your friends. Um, you know, we've got this great tap room, this giant back porch uh, that you can sit on. It's and very enjoy, nice. Especially on the nice days like today with some good weather. There you go. So that, 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 that's the idea. We would love to open some more of uh, Sweet Taters businesses up in, uh, uh, in Eastern North Carolina. That's exactly well, where I Well, we, we'll be looking for that. Thank <laughs> you so much for having us in today. And um, um, we greatly... Uh, Appreciate what you've done in our community here. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Coming up on Crafting the Brew. You know, we've been working for several years getting our products uh, to where they were ready to go to market. And so we opened here at uh, what we call The Pond, uh, our tap room and brewery, uh, January 2nd of this year, or January 3rd of this year. This is Lou from Lou Readers and American Table, inviting you to come in and taste the made from scratch food at our table. We make all our dressings and sauces in house with fresh chalkboard specials every day, North Carolina craft beers on all our taps, over 20 varieties of bourbon, jumbo wings, and the best burgers in town. Made from scratch food without the made from scratch prices. Located on Sunset Avenue, across from the Harris Teeter. Open seven days a week for lunch and dinner, brunch on Sundays. We're here at the Rocky Mount Brew Mill property at Koi Pond Brewing Company. Um, Eric Galoni, one of the owners, um, and um, are, are you the brewer too, the I'm, brewmaster? I'm the head brewer. Um, I'm, I'm just some guy who makes beer. Well, that's great. Um, that's great. I, I remember, uh, it, what, just a short year ago, maybe a year and a half, two years at the most, uh, you you experimenting with it and everybody telling you what a great product you had and here you are. Yeah, we um, so Koi Pond Brewing Company is a partnership between myself, uh, my wife Mary, uh, and Matt and Deborah Sparati. And um, you know we've been working for several years getting our products uh, to where they were ready to go to market. And so we opened here at uh, what we call the Pond, uh, our tap room and brewery, uh, January second of this year or January third of this year. 
And you have a crowd every time you open, don't you? We've had a really good response from the community. Uh, we're open Thursday through Sunday, and um, there's a, a lot of people that come enjoy cold craft beer here at the pond. But that is this is great. You've got a beautiful facility. Um, I'm, we're all the citizens around here are really proud of what has been accomplished at this historic site. Well, well, thank you. It's um, the house here is uh, was built in 1835, mm. so we're coming up on almost 200 year old piece of property that was you know refurbished and turned into a brewery and a tap room. We've got a lot of cool furniture from the Red Oak Wood Shop. Um, we've repurposed a lot of things out of the mill and a lot of lumber. <laughs> Uh, the floors are original, the windows are original. Uh, this, this place has a lot of personality. Well, the whole brew scene is a culture and an experience and a journey itself. But how nice to be able to incorporate a historic aspect to it as well. Yeah, absolutely. To be able to take an old property that means so much to the, the folks here in Rocky Mount and repurpose it and put it to work doing something else in an industry that is just on fire. Um, it's just been a really cool experience. And you are Rocky Mount's first. Yep, and um, and that feels good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, right here on the corner of Falls and Elm, you know, we, we knew that there was a, a, a market for our product and we knew that we had something uh, that we wanted to share with Rocky Mount in Eastern North Carolina. Um, so it, it, it feels good that it's been so well received. So tell us a little bit about your product. Sure. I know going from the kitchen to the, to the uh, bigger, uh, output obviously is is a, a challenge and a, and but I know you've had fun with it as well. It, you know, making beer is is great fun and we, like I said, we spent a lot of time working on our products. We we spent a lot of time uh, market testing and doing tastings to make sure that we were bringing something to market that was ready, um, that we were bringing something to market that was good and that was not just a Rocky Mountain beer, but it, mm -hmm. it, it would stand up with with all the other just amazing North Carolina beers. We have a very rich uh, heritage of agriculture and craftsmanship and we, we sort of wanted to live into that and so we spent a lot of time um, serving beer to a lot of people to make sure we had our ducks in a row. I remember um, seeing you out on Facebook talking about great new product. Yeah, I've got to it, taste this one. It, it's been fun developing new beers, uh, sharing those with folks. We've got, I think the last count, we've got 24 different beers that we rotate through. Oh my goodness. Uh, including a lot of seasonals. We do um, as best we can to, to source local, um, organic when we can, seasonal. Um, you know, we've just had a really good run lately with strawberries from the farmer's market that we've put into a beer. We've used watermelon. I bet that was um, tasty. Good stuff. And, um, you know, I just talked to the farmer's market the other day and I've got a vendor that's getting ready to get us some Thai basil for one of our beers. Oh, wow. Um, we have kind of a culinary lean when it comes to our beers. Um, we try to keep it really interesting. We try to keep it fun. Um, we try to give something to the public that they're not gonna get anywhere else. And that keeps it interesting for us. Cause like I said, making beer is really fun. Um, and there's so many different taste profiles. Um, it, it, you about have to have a brewmaster recommend to you the different kinds uh, unless you are very well versed well, in, in it yourself. Everybody's tastes are different mm -hmm. and you know we wanted to have beers for everybody. We have a lot of people come in and, and say look you know I drink this American light beer and I want to enjoy your beers but I don't know what to try. So myself and my staff we, we, we help people kind of navigate what they like and Everybody's tastes are different and unique, so we try to have something for everybody. Mm -hmm. right? We're something that, and there's a lot of beers that people like that they don't even know they would like them until they try them. Exactly. So sourcing local, using seasonal and, and fresh local ingredients uh, is a good way for us to help people ease into craft beer. And, and I know that wherever you are in the state or the country and whoever's brewing, that the soil has a, a big impact on the products that you put into the beer and have different taste profiles because of the soil. I mean, I think it's, it's the regionality of restaurants and, and brewing to, it, to, to me, I take it as a responsibility to make sure that what we offer tastes like Eastern North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, what people do in the Midwest or in California or the Pacific Northwest, everybody regionally has their strengths. And what we have in Eastern North Carolina is just this rich agricultural heritage that allows us to get those things, to get them easily, to get them locally, to get them fresh or organic or whatever, um, and put them into beer. We had a beer we released a couple of weeks ago with cucumber and basil. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of local beer drinkers that kind of were like cucumber and basil. 
Should I try that one? <laughs> um, and it was just, it was overwhelmingly um, loved and accepted because it's just not something somebody thought of. You take a sip of it and you're like, good. It's well together. Good's good. That's right. Um, and we're really glad that it was good. So tell us how, how much you're, um, you're brewing here on site each week. We've got a two barrel brew system. We're brewing at full capacity, um, depending on the availability of the fermenters and our production. Um, you know, we might brew two or three days one week. This week we're brewing five days in a row just to, just to get caught up. Um, so it's, it's, it, we, 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 are, we are running really close to um, our uh, supply and demand meeting. And, and just been open since January. And open four days a week. That's that just amazing. So, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been really cool that we can turn beers really quickly and that we can offer some variety and we can offer new things. And that's not to say that we don't have people that have their favorites. We've got some flagship beers that people come in every week that they almost expect to be here. And, and we run those just as often as we can. So how'd you come up with your name? Um, so we wanted to come up with a name that meant something to us, uh, was very important to us, but didn't lock us into one style or one, one thought. So I've got a couple of really big koi fish tattoos on my arm that um, each one of them very uh, colorful. signify one of my two sons. And so it just made sense having a really cool business card on my arm made sense to name the company after it. Well, that is great. That is great. So where do you see a uh, future here for Koi Pond? You know, just keep making great beers and interesting beers and introducing the public to those uh, products and having a lot of fun with it and um, just seeing where the, the market and the industry takes us. I love your outdoor area. It's absolutely beautiful out there. Very welcoming. Big, big uh, fan. We have a lot of, we have family friendly. We're dog friendly. We have a lot of picnics on the weekends. Okay. We have a lot of people bringing, bringing their kids and pets and it's, it's just a good time. It's a good place to hang out. Well, we thank you for what you've done uh, here for our community, being our first, putting us on the map because mm -hmm. there is a trail and a map. Right on. Uh, and the young people, not just young people, they're going all over the state for an experience. And we get that. We, 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 we are a stop on a lot of those trails and a lot of those trips that folks set up. And that, and that feels real good to be included in, a, in an Definitely. industry in North Carolina that's exploding. Well, thank you for inviting us in. And um, we're glad to be here at Koi Pond. Make it a trip out here soon. Thanks for coming. Very nice um, uh, having Sweet, Potato Sweet Tata's Restaurant and, and Koi Pond um, Brewing Company here on site, but I know there's massive plans here. So tell us a little That's bit about what's, what else is going on so, here. So once all the brewing pieces and the brew mill as, as a sub-category sub, uh, in some sense is, is here, um, what will happen all the way into 2018 is the uh, main build out of the mill that, uh, that sort of corners the whole <clears throat> mill site on one, one, one edge here. Um, and uh, it will be offices, uh, another big restaurant, uh, 44 apartments. Wow. And so they're, they're, this whole living and working in one, one space at the mill with the view of the river, we're gonna have uh, at that point access to um, the island that's out here. So there's a seven acre island that is hard to see. You know, when you look out on the river, you kind of see something, but that's going to be a really exciting piece so you can walk over from, from the main mill uh, on a, a catwalk on the dam onto that whole island. I hear stories uh, from our <laughs> past. I grew up here. I'm native here. But um, I hear stories from our past where they had concerts out there on the island. And, and I don't think very many of the people here today remember that time. And so um, the idea is to bring that part of that history back. And that's excellent. Kind of tie it in. So, so then overall, when you then think of it you know, in two or three years, you can come here, you can grab a beer, you can take it to the island, listen to your music, you know, bring some picnic or, or get some food here. Will there be shops in, in what's built out? Well, not so much you know, traditional retail, but you know, there will be a bottle shop most likely, and there will be maybe an arts and crafts mm -hmm. place. There might be, we'll potentially looking into a little artist setup, so where we're art, Arts and crafts are made here. I think you'll definitely you know, woodwork, attract that kind of person. Right. And so, you know, the craft brewing is already a pretty hands-on creative uh, job, but uh, having, having some woodworkers and some other artisans uh, is, is absolutely nice. in the mix. And so, so that all might, might show up as we grow here. Well, very nice. So by the end of this year, um, the portion of the Rocky Mount Meals um, adjacent to what's it's right all the individual the pieces, really. All the houses and a few of the individual mm -hmm. brick buildings. And then starting next year into 2018, the main mill 
on the river will be developed. And we're here today in the historic house that's um, been here. It was here. the Battles family uh -huh. first, you know, where they lived as owners and then the main offices were housed. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous work on this historic place. Um, no, this, this is nicely foreshadowing what's to come. Yes, indeed. Um, well, it is a, a wonderful work in progress. I think happening a lot quicker than anybody thought it could. Yes, for a long time you just saw us mowing the lawn, right? That's and right. Then, <laughs> but now things are really falling into they place. They are, and so every week you come by here, some, some progress has been made. And um, it's looking very nice, and it's attracting huge crowds yeah, out no, here. Yeah, no, we invite yes. everybody to come out and take a look. Definitely. The site is open. Absolutely. It's the whole vicinity looking really nice with the Mill uh, Village homes and um, uh, everything that's happening right down here. We've long since needed to take advantage of, of the river that runs right through us. Yes. And, and this is just a great opportunity to do that. To, to come and, back and um, grab a beer. Absolutely. The investment here is, is certainly appreciated by our region and um, helps put us on the map in eastern North Carolina yeah. with a, a very popular trend. So Sebastian, thank you. Um, we'll look You're forward to checking Absolutely. in on you from time yeah, to yeah. time. Stay tuned in. See how progress is going. And um, we thank you for joining us in our series, Crafting the Brew. Next time on Crafting the Brew, we venture to Raleigh to hashtag tap the capital at Raleigh Brewing Company. The preceding program has been brought to you by Lou Rita's An American Table, Blackwater Barrels, The Rocky Mount Mills Project, and Double Barley Brewing Company.